Good morning and welcome to today's exclusive webinar. My name is Gina Guevara and I will be your moderator. Today we aim to provide you more insight on investing in equities, owning a piece of the economic recovery. Our speakers will later share the economic outlook amidst the pandemic situation and discuss investing in equities and how to get the most out of your investment. But before we begin, may I remind everyone to type in your questions even while the presentation is ongoing so we can ask them later in the question and answer portion. Now to formally welcome everyone, let me call in the head of Metro Bank's Trust Banking Group, Dondi Santelian, for a few words. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. On behalf of Metro Bank Chairman Parker D, President Peyton D, I am pleased to welcome you all to this exclusive market briefing webinar by Metro Bank's Trust Banking Group. 2020 has been a challenging year. In January, we started with the Baal eruption, which resulted in a negative GDP trend for the first quarter. By the second quarter, uh, around mid March, um, the pandemic struck. We went in ECQ almost nine months, and we had a negative GDP trend for second quarter at negative 16.5, as well as the third quarter at negative 11.5, worse than expected. This crisis is worse than what I've ever seen, even compared to the 1997 Asian financial crisis or even the 2008 global financial crisis. Um, this is the first time that we were not only affected financially, but emotionally as well and psychologically. This is why today's talk on economic outlook and equities are topics relevant to gear you up to navigate through these challenges. In a previous webinar held last month, uh, we talked about asset allocation and portfolio management and how equities plays a role in your portfolio. We talked about purpose, the investment path, P for purpose, A for appetite for risk, P for time horizon, and H for hurdles. When we discussed time horizon, we said that anything that's not needed in the next three or five years should be put in equities. We're not saying that 100% should be in equities, but a small portion of your, port of your portfolio should be there. Um, equities has always been an advocacy of mine when I joined Trust Banking Group, only because the participation rate here in the Philippines is quite low at 1%. This compares to around over 50% in China and in the US. This coupled with the current situation and interest rates. Uh, we're close to record lows, which makes, it looking for, which makes it important to look for alternative investments to at least beat inflation. And this morning, I was just reading the headlines, and I saw that the Dow Jones, which is the U.S. index for equities, hit an all-time high at 30,000. And yet, the Philippine markets, or stock market rather, um, is still at 7,100 versus an all-time high in mid-9,000 levels. As always, you can count on Metro Bank to guide you as you move forward in your financial journey. I will take no more of your time. Once again, thank you for honoring us with your virtual presence. I hope you will find this webinar insightful. Thank you. Thank you, Dondi, for the opening remarks. Uh, to begin our program, our first speaker is the head of the Markets Research and Strategy Department of Metro Bank's Trust Banking Group. His team specializes in covering the macroeconomic fundamentals of various markets and comes up with actionable insights for the investment teams. He has been in the industry for the last 11 years. Uh, please, let's all welcome Mr. John Monsoya. Hi everyone, once again, good morning and welcome to today's webinar by Metrobank. Before we go to the main topic this morning, to walk you through the current happenings in the local 
economy, as well as share our view with where we see this headed in the next few months. So overall, certainly the pandemic and as well as certain headwinds we have experienced for the year have greatly hampered our growth. Now, through all of this, a small portion of our population was actually able to start to adapt and to learn how to do their daily lives despite the uh, quarantines as well as the um, setbacks. There is still, however, a greater untapped potential among the population that the government is now trying to um, make sure to be active and engaged in order to make sure that the recovery comes in faster than where we expect it. So to dive straight into the material, um, GDP has been far off and has been negative for the whole 2020 so far. As mentioned earlier, first quarter GDP came in at negative 0.7%. It was the pandemic then drove it down further to negative 16.9 revised. Um, by the second quarter, while the current third quarter reading is still at negative 11.5. Now, the negative 11.5 reading came in worse than the initial estimates of a lot of economists. Okay, so again, let me share with you the GDP. We came in at negative 11.5% as discussed earlier. Now, this negative 11.5 came in worse than what a lot of economists have expected. And a big reason why that is so is because, number one, Normal people like you and me, the consumers, consist of roughly 63% of GDP. The fact that we stayed at home for the duration of the quarantine has really hampered our spending habits. And as such, given that we give a big portion of our weight in GDP, GDP was naturally went low. Looking into the reasons as to why we actually uh, lessened our spending habits, the government as well as the World Bank came out with a survey and it says that the main reasons why we have slowed down in spending is obviously, number one, the quarantine has stopped us from going to those establishments where we usually spend our cash. Secondly, for those who have frequented online platforms to buy their everyday goods, there are certain things that you really just can't buy online. For everything else, a uh, uh, the part of a population that has adopted has really relied on digitalization and has gone to the internet and online banking and online groceries as well as shopping for their everyday needs. Now, the big businesses as well as the entrepreneurs have seen this opportunity and have actually garnered most of their resources in order to make sure that their online platforms are very up and active. They want their online presence to be known so that they know where to get the customers, and the customers know where to go in order to buy their goods. However, these people who use online transactions and who do their everyday um, dealings online already is the exception rather than the rule. If we look at the total of adult population, around 51 million adult Filipinos, or 70% of the total, still don't have a bank account. Now, we could argue that one does not really need a bank account to do things online. There are the emergence of e-wallets and such have made everything more convenient. Now, we took a look at the utilization or how people use their mobile phones as well as the internet. The good news is a bigger part of the adult population have access to these facilities. Roughly 69% of the adult population has a smartphone or mobile phone while around 53% have internet access. Unfortunately, though, given the lack of financial, um, a smaller chunk of these people, just roughly 12%, use that device or their mobile device to transact in financial transactions, while roughly a lower percentage or 9% 9 of the people who have access to the internet really use it to buy things online to do their banking transactions. The government is cognizant or the government knows this particular situation and would like to tap on that portion or the larger chunk of the population to resume their spending in order to make sure GDP becomes stronger once again. And how they're doing it is to make sure that everyone feels safe going out of their houses. Initially, when the virus struck at the early part of the year, GCQ measures 
were very stringent, only allowing for essential businesses to be open. However, as the months went along, there, uh, the recent GCQ guidelines have already allowed a lot of establishments to open 100%. There's only a select few among all the um, establishments that are remain closed as of the moment, particularly because their business involves close distance and um, close proximity with each other. Now, it's also important to note that the, it's also integral or significant, uh, a significant move to make sure that the people will be able to go to these establishments. As such, public transportation is now back online, although not as uh, we saw it way back when there was no virus. We've been seeing more and more public utility vehicles outside the streets and doing what they do best. However, we must uh, make sure that we match ourselves with our expectations. Basically, for buses, for example, they can't carry 100% of their capacity and they're just carrying half as of the moment. But the good news is um, the arteries of the metro are once again active and we're hoping that in the next few months more and more of these public utility vehicles will be utilized. Overall, despite the opening of the establishments, despite the opening of vehicles, Ultimately, it's again up to you and me to drive economic growth. We must feel confident. We must feel safe before we venture out of our homes. A lot of people have already started to do this. How, but however, you can expect that it takes a while for habits to really form. As such, we expect growth to continue to slowly move higher instead of um, experiencing an overnight bounce back in growth. We feel that... Um, Growth will not return overnight, but it, we are steadily heading there, and we're expecting better times going into the 2021 and next year. So overall, I hope my time with you today um, gave you a brief background of what's happening, and it is my wish that you use the recent um, learnings to be able to appreciate the meat of the um, the discussion moving on forward. I now turn you over to the rest of the team for um, the continuation of the presentations. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, John. Uh, as you mentioned uh, in your presentation, it seems that capacity is in fact returning to pre-COVID levels. Uh, at the same time, we see a surge in online platforms as outlets for growth. However, I think the main takeaway you mentioned in your conclusion is despite these, it's still up to the consumer. Uh, as they will be the main determinant for growth moving forward. Uh, thank you, John, once again for your, your time. Uh, now, before we move on to the next topic, just a quick reminder, please don't hesitate to ask your questions in the Q&A box uh, so we can discuss this later on. Now, our next speaker heads the Equities Investment Department of Metro Bank's Trust Banking Group. His team manages the firm's 100 billion peso equity portfolio. He has worked in the industry for the last 10 years as both a broker and as an asset manager. Please let us all welcome Mr. Derek Bambigo. Thank you for uh, taking the time to attend our uh, discussion today. Okay. So after we've discussed about um, investments in the previous webinar, uh, some of you will surely be interested also in discussing investing in stocks. So essentially, um, stock market investing is not as complex as some people think it is. Uh, in fact, just buying a stock means basically having to benefit from owning some of the country's well-known and popular companies. And just like a business, uh, you are part owner of these companies, such as uh, Metrobank, uh, Meralco, Jollibee, Ayala Land, and uh, other established institutions representing various sectors ranging from financials to telecommunications. The diverse number of companies and sectors allow investors to choose the stock investment that best matches their investment profile. As of today, we have about, about 274 companies and more that are being traded in an exchange. More on the exchange, uh, the stock market or the Philippine Stock Exchange is uh, the country's national stock exchange. It was uh, created uh, as a merger from the Manila Stock Exchange and the Makati Stock Exchange in 1992. However, 
uh, including its various forms. It has been an operation since 1927, which means that the exchange is fairly old or has been here already for about 93 years. It has a total market capitalization of about 12.42 trillion or roughly about three-fourths the size of the Philippine economy, making it or making the exchange a bellwether of the economic condition of the Philippines. Daily, on average, we are seeing an exchange of about 6.7 billion worth of shares between buyers and sellers, which suggests that there is enough liquidity to go around for everyone to go in and out of the market. And we see this likely to improve further as new investors come in and take an interest in the stock market. As of uh, end uh, 2019, we have about uh, 1.23 million trading accounts, as uh, Don mentioned earlier, that just represents about 1% uh, participation in the market. However, we're seeing uh, in a, an increasing trend, more interest now as people were stuck at home in the past uh, uh, few months with online trading platforms attracting new accounts by 15 to 20% more than previous years. Most of these new accounts are owned by the young investors aged 30 to 44. With this increasing trend, we see the PSCI likely to reach new highs as uh, participation improves and is now made even easier with uh, more avenues for entry and not just uh, direct stock market investment, but also through investing in equity funds. And for those investors you know, that have been in the market for long, uh, they understood the benefits of having a long investment horizon. In fact, when you invest in the market in 2009, you would have made significant amount of uh, uh, returns already uh, over the past 10 years. This is because the market has always been on an upward general trend, although in the short term, it goes sideways, but you know, in the longer investment horizon, it generally is an upward trend. And as such, we have seen significant improvements over the past few decades, uh, with the stock market growing by as much 1,100% in 30 years ending 2019, of course. This performance would only have been possible if investors kept their investments in the market based on a long-term perspective. And as you can see here, based on a 10,000 peso investment, you would have made a significant uh, gains of about 120,000 over 30 years, 36,500 in 20 years, and 25,600 in 10 years. In percentage terms, you will see that your uh, investment would have made you 156% since 2009, 265% in 1999, and 1,100% in 1989. On an annualized basis, you would have earned uh, 986.86. 6.69 and 8.64% uh, on a yearly basis. And one of the main considerations in investing in the stock market is the destructive effect of inflation on wealth. Since inflation has always been present, it is imperative to look for ways to offset the impact or its impact on the value of our money. Uh, because over time, our wealth will lose its value against inflation unless we have a way don't pace its hurdle. While there have been other available investment outlets out there, there is nothing that comes close to beating the returns of the stock market, of course, over the long term. As what I've shown you in the previous slides, the stock market has indeed proven that it consistently grows over time and with a high rate of return at that. But what about comparing it to other available assets or other available investments out there? As you can see in this comparison, uh, if you have invested in a savings account and time deposit yearly since 2009, you would have just simply lost the inflation at 2.91%. On the other hand, the PSEI obviously outpaced all these investments with a widespread even versus 10-year bond bought in 2009. Comparing against inflation, the PSEI will definitely give your investments a huge leap over inflation. But even with this potential, we have to ask ourselves, are we really ready for this type of investment? So as such, here's an easy way to check ourselves and see if we have what it takes to buy into the stock market. Remember these three T's before investing. First is time, which is to check if we have an investment mindset that is geared to sit at an investment for long periods of time. 
I always tell myself that losses in the stock market in the short term are more than often temporary unless we are buying into highly speculative stocks or companies. When we are firm with our decisions that are based on high quality research and we have put in our effort to know what it is that we are buying, what we are buying, then we have to stick by it and ensure that we do not get affected by short term volatility. Volatility is simply the price swings of an investment, and the wider the swings of our investment is, the more risky the investment generally is. So the, the second thing we have to check uh, our, uh, with ourselves is the treasure or whether we are investing funds that are not allocated for use in the short term. Money must only be the excess funds that we have only. We have to ensure that what we invest are funds that we will not be needing in the next couple of years because imagine having to cut loss or take profit prematurely because you need to pay for bills. When, you in, when your investment just started going higher or worse, uh, it's still below your entry point. So lastly, what we need to check for ourselves is if we need to know if we are capable to actively manage our investments. As I mentioned earlier, most of the newly uh, trading, op uh, newly opened trading accounts, uh, those uh, uh, 30 to 44 years of age, they have uh, work. They are working in uh, nine to five jobs, and have little to no time for monitoring their investments. Unless you are sure that you can dedicate a portion of your time in managing these investments, then it may be ideal for you to entrust your investments in professionals who are in the industry of investing in the stock market. Not only does it ease the pressure for you having to analyze each and every detail of the company that you're invested in, but you also get to see how your funds are managed by the fund manager's periodic report. If you believe that you have checked yourself with these three T's, then the next question is a matter of when. So I'd like to tell you this quote from uh, Warren Buffett. He's one of the legendary stock market investors in history who was able to amass huge sums of wealth over time, which made him the richest man on earth at one point. And he said, I made my first investment at age 11, and I was wasting my life until then. And what he means by this is basically that he understood at an early age the benefits of being invested in the stock market. Now, we, we as regular investors, and while we may not be as sophisticated like Mr. Buffett here at 11 years old, we can try to emulate his investment mindset when it comes to stocks, which is buy stocks and keep holding. So my question is, when is the best time for us to invest in the market. And I'd like to leave you with three tips for this to ask, for you to answer this question. First is to make sure that you're comfortable and understand the risks associated with the stocks or with stocks. Just like any other business, you should take time to read up and learn about the intricacies of these investments. When you don't feel comfortable, you end up losing money as you pull out at the most unfortunate time. I always hear new stock traders being surprised with how much money they lose, but they fail to realize that the only reason they did not do well because they did not put in the effort to know what they were buying in the first place. And as such, they do not feel comfortable seeing the price movements of their portfolio. Remember to plan your trades and trade your plan. Buy as soon as you are ready. Second tip is to buy in intervals or in trends, which basically means buying at several levels. Doing so helps avoid losing big in the short term by averaging the cost and being able to build a good base at lower levels. And this holds especially true for uh, stocks that shows lo strong long-term potential, which means we benefit from its growth. And lastly, the last tip I'd like to leave you guys uh, to answer this question is do not be afraid of the dip. While uh, it may sound uh, uh, a little bit too gung-ho to do so, uh, remember that the market always recovers in the long term. Looking at the PSEI, the best time to have bought into the market was, of course, when it was trading at the lows. Now that it's looking to recover lost ground, as uh, what we're foreseeing now, those that bought at the lows have been rewarded significantly. In fact, this year, from the lows of 5,000, the PSEI is now trading at around 7,000. That's a 40% increase in just less than a year. Imagine doing so in 2009 when the market also fell by 50%. So all, all in all, uh, these three tips should leave you wondering, what do we expect from the market moving forward? 
And to give you a better picture of what we expect, here are our projections for the next three years. From our current index level of 7,000, we are looking at the market reaching 7,500 by year end. And while a 5-7% to upside may not be too attractive for you, but nonetheless, it's still a lot better than what other investment outlets out there can offer. More so, we are looking at an even better 2021 with a target of 8,300 and 2022 with an 8,900. Take note, however, that these are just our projections and that actual price performance will still be different. In uh, percentage terms, this just means that we are looking at about, again, as I mentioned earlier, 5 to 7% for the rest of the year, 18.5 uh, until end of 2021, and 27% until 2022, based off a 7,000 starting point. Take note that this considers, of course, a return to normal scenario as the availability of a COVID vaccine makes it possible for the economy to recover its uh, rock star status. Remember that pre-COVID Philippines was one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Now that uh, vaccine, or sorry, rather, now that the vaccine is under development, uh, or showing signs of positive design, of positive development, we are looking to recover some of that old normal back. With this, we expect the stock market to lead us uh, there as companies are likely to recover lost ground and reverse the damage that the pandemic has done. So if I was able to convince you that the stock market is the right investment for you, then the next few slides will give you an idea how you can start trading the market. Essentially, there are just two ways for a, big, for a regular investor like you and even me to buy into the stock market. The first is to open an account with a stock broker, and second is to buy into an equity fund. And just like any other investment, you have to go through the documentation. This includes having you test yourself for risk tolerance, which is essentially how much risk you're willing to take, what your financial goals are, and your source of, for sources of income, among others. And while both allow you to invest in equities or stocks, both still vary on what it is you're actually buying. So trading with a stock broker essentially means you, are, you have the option to buy into one or several listed companies. But also, this entails periodically reading up analysis on the companies that you are invested in. You have to regularly check for updates and make sure that the unforeseen developments are met with quick action to either reposition or to add into that investment. On the other hand, if you manage, if you have limited time to actively manage your stocks or stock investment, you can try investing in equity funds versus trading with a stock broker. Buying, in a, buying into an equity fund limits your downside risks as you will be buying into a diversified portfolio, which owns at least probably 20 or more names. Since this is a fund, access to it is fairly easy. With as little as 10,000 pesos, you can already monitor investments via periodic fund manager reports, or you can just check for it online. So to give you a better picture of what you can, uh, what you will get out of investing in a fund. Here's a quick snapshot. So the first is affordability. So owning a stock varies depending on the minimum order allowed by the exchange, and this means your investment into the stock market is limited if you're planning to create a diversified portfolio. So with just 10,000 pesos, you can probably buy just one or a few names, but you have to choose which names you like. Uh, names such as Globe will require about 10,000. Same goes with San Miguel Corporation, Ayala Corp, LDT, and maybe a little bit of Jollibee here and there. Or you can buy into a fund and immediately get exposure in at least 20 to 30 names for just a fraction of the cost. So here you can see the 30 names that uh, are part of the index. You can gain access to it as soon as you invest in a fund. The second point I'd like to highlight is the diversification uh, benefit. And because of this, diversification is an important tool for you to minimize the risk in your investment because of uh, less concentration into just a few names. Instead, you are able to own an array of top-notch companies that have been analyzed by the fund, fund's investment team. 
This removes much of the work involved in investing in the stock market as you are able to reap the benefits of the fund's long-term returns without having to monitor your stocks actively. And because we believe that the economy is and always will be growing, these companies will also mirror that growth through stock appreciation and dividends. And because the business of managing funds entails putting in a lot of time and effort, in keeping up with the stock market, professional management is truly required. As such, the firm, or Metro Bank Trust Banking Group, has assembled a highly competitive team of investment professionals whose job is to continually monitor and look for opportunities that will benefit the stakeholders of the fund. Ultimately, our job is to make sure that you as the investors get the most out of what the market has to offer. A fourth point I'd like to highlight is the transparency. And since being invested in a fund means also having access to what it owns, our regularly updated uh, reports are available for you to view anytime you like. This is made possible through the monthly fund report, which shows you information such as the top 10 holdings report. All of these prices also are available for you to view on a daily basis as our unit investment trust funds, or UITFs in short, are updated on a daily basis. You can search for it online or you just go to our website at metrobank.com.ph. And the last point I'd like to highlight when owning a fund is, of course, the convenience. UITF Online, or Unit Investment Trust Fund again, online, is a feature of Metrobank Online or the online arm of Metrobank allows existing UITF clients to invest online. You can now invest, redeem, and view your portfolio at your most convenient time. Here at MetroBAP, we have several passive equity funds, which you can choose from depending on your risk appetite and financial goal. Currently, we have the Metro Balance Fund, which is a fund invested in both equities and fixed income. Of course, this is ideal for those that would like to have a mix of both and minimize the risk from the stock market by putting in some investments in the fixed income space. You also have pure equity funds, such as the Philippine Equity Index Tracker, which is essentially a mirror of the PSEI or the top 30 index names of the Philippines. It is an all-weather fund catering to those who understand the long-term growth prospects of the Philippine economy. You also have a fund, or a defensive fund for that matter, uh, available through Metro High Dividend Yield Fund, which aims to give access to investors who believe in growing their investments through a through compounding of the dividends paid out by the high-yielding names in the market. And lastly, we have the Metro Equity Fund, which is an actively managed fund that maximizes the potential of the Philippine stock market by increasing exposure in names geared to grow significantly faster than the index in the long term. This is best suited for those investors that would like to make the most out of their stock market investments. And also, aside from the Peso Equity Funds, we have available investment outlets for investors looking for opportunities outside of the Philippine stock market. We offer global equity funds that are invested in global stocks. We have uh, US-focused, Eurozone-focused, and Japan-focused Japan stocks for uh, funds. And you can learn more about them online at MetroBank's website. And since we are in the discussion of investing more conveniently, we are pleased to inform you that we have now a better way to access unit investment trust funds online. To access these funds for the new, uh, new clients, uh, you just have to go to any MetroBank branch and open a UITF or unit investment trust fund or equity fund account. For existing clients or those that already have uh, investments in the UITF or unit investment trust fund, you can now invest in the redeemed investments online through these channels. You don't need to go to the branch anymore. By 2021, we hope you know, we have a new uh, a website online, our new uh, feature online, which allows new clients to invest and open a new UITF via MetroBank Online without going to the branch. We hope that you begin your journey in building your wealth from the stock market through any of our equity funds. With that, I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to attend this webinar. We are now open to answer your questions. Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you, Derek, for the insightful presentation. No? It, it amazes me really to see uh, equity returns over a lengthy investment horizon. Uh, given that we are coming off a weak year, uh, I think or I hope that we could see similar, similar results in the next 10 years. Now, before we go to the Q&A portion, we'd also like to request everyone to provide feedback on today's exclusive event. Uh, you have the option uh, to either use your smartphone and scan the QR code flashed in the screen or click the link in the right-hand portion as well. No? So I'll, I'll leave you time to uh, click or flash. Uh, now, joining us for the Q&A is the Chief Investment Officer of Metrobank Trust Banking Group. Uh, he has been in the industry for the past 30 years, uh, 27 of which with Metrobank. Let us all welcome Mr. John Padilla. Okay, to start off the Q&A, first question, this one is addressed to Mr. John Munsayak. No? Can the economy grow despite the absence of a vaccine? Thank you for the question, um, Gino. I hope everyone can hear, hear me clearly this time around. Um, ultimately, the vaccine is there as a long-term solution. What the government and what the population does in the meantime will greatly dictate the movement of recovery. In our case, a lot of people are already learning to live with the virus. And as such, you've already been seeing recovery ongoing. And with the vaccine coming in, hopefully by next year, um, it should speed growth even more. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, for the next question, this is for Mr. John Padilla. Uh, what is driving the market recovery these past few weeks? Thank you, Gino. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I can think of two two things. First, excitement. Uh, as we all of our, all of us have been mostly confined to our homes, we've been excited to go out and we'll be back to our usual lives. I think the same thing is happening with the market. Everybody's excited to see how this market is going to rebound. And so you have a lot of investors finding quite a lot of names that are trading at bargain levels right now, and they're excited to see how this this companies will perform over the next two to three years. The next is confidence. I think this is a vote of confidence that our market, backed up by the economy, has what it takes to recover. I guess for those of you who have been around during the Asian financial crisis, when the markets have been devastated, and then a repeat of that happened 10 years after, during the global financial crisis, the market has always rebounded. I guess the pandemic the COVID-19 is uh, presenting a, a different challenge altogether compared to the previous two. But nevertheless, we, we think that the, the rally we're seeing right now is a, is a testimony, is a testament to the confidence of the market that this economy has what it takes to rebound. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, insight there. No? Uh, the third question you have is for Derek. Uh, you think uh, the worst is already over for the PSEI? Uh, I believe we are on our way to get out of the worst years of the stock market uh, because of the positive developments in the creation of a vaccine and, of course, the gradual reopening of the economy. Uh, we are of the view that the corporate earnings are on its way to recovery also, which underscores the potential growth of the stock market in the next few quarters. We believe that the market is likely to continue this trend, especially if we're looking at it on a two- to three-year investment uh, horizon. Thank you, Derek. Uh, now, moving on to the fourth question you have. This is for Mr. Dondi Santelian. Uh, Dondi, I, I think you mentioned earlier a bit on interest rates now, but given that they are at all-time lows or near all-time lows, is, is this good for the stock market uh, the next five years or so? Well, the interest rates are all at all-time lows because we saw pump priming by the PSP this past, this past year now because of the pandemic. They aggressively lowered interest rates, and it's interesting the relationship between interest rates and um, equity markets. Generally, uh, when interest rates are low, we find people looking for alternative investments. Um, right now, you see time deposit rates below one percent, uh, government security rates for bonds not even beating inflation, which is around two and a half percent. No, um, so definitely people will have to migrate to. Um, down the credit curve and look for alternative assets. So while interest rates are low, 
we expect that migration into equity markets, which should bode well for the equity markets. Um, having said that, also earlier in my um, opening remark, I said I read in the in the um, papers this morning that the Dow Jones hit 30,000 an all-time high. Um, the Philippines equity market actually is 25% discount of the highs. So there can still be some upside, especially with, given the fact that interest rates are low. So that's it. Thank you, Don. No, I, I agree with your with your point there. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, this is to Boss Derek. Uh, do you think current PSEI levels are too high? Uh, why do you think so? Uh, well, I believe that the market uh, normally uh, reverts back to uh, fair value levels. And based on what we're seeing right now, fair value is a little bit higher than where it is right now. So I think the market has room for upside. In fact, as I've shown you earlier, the uh, fair value for the market as of end 2020 in our estimates, about 7,500. And even better for 2021, I think that uh, there is uh, much room for new investors, especially to gain more out of this uh, trend, especially since, again, as I mentioned earlier, we are on track to uh, a gradual recovery from this uh, pandemic. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, I, uh, upside is still there. Uh, now, this is to Mr. John Munsayak. Uh, you mentioned a lot on online platforms. No? Uh, do you think online retail could compensate for and even displace uh, stores here in the Philippines as it did? Uh, in, in overseas uh, countries? Well, definitely, Gino, uh, in the long run, um, digitalization and online retailing would take over, and that might lead to certain losses in jobs. However, that particular transition from the brick and mortar stores to online stores will also um, open up opportunities for new jobs to really pop out of the market. So, overall, we think that what we really need for now or the first step would really be to engage everyone in the population and make sure that everyone has access so that at least um, moving forward, there's going to be more volumes and bigger transactions happening in the online space. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, next question. Uh, this is... To Sir John Padilla, uh, is it a wrong mindset to buy stocks only when the price goes down? Is it better or worse to buy the same value in peso amounts of stocks monthly or quarterly? Thank you. That's a very good question, actually. Uh, generally, you would want to buy when prices are going down or when prices are low. However, what if the market is already uptrending? Therefore, you will not have any more an opportunity to buy because the price is going up. So the answer there is it's a combination of both. You can buy when the market is going low. And if the market should be uptrending already, then your strategy of gradually buying bits and pieces as the market goes up on a regular basis would be an excellent decision and strategy as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, uh, moving on, uh, this is to Mr. Derek. Does the average investor who is not a professional stockbroker make more money when investing in an index fund or when he uh, or she er earn more by picking a few good stocks and staying with them? I guess the thing here is uh, limiting, of course, the downside risks not investing in the stock market directly. Uh, while, I, while I do believe that there's uh, a lot of opportunities for investors to invest directly, uh, for investors that are a little bit more passive when it comes to investing, you know, may not have enough time or opportunity to uh, uh, get that that I don't know that return that they're looking for. Uh, because of that, I would rather suggest for them to invest in a uh, fund because it offers the best uh, case against uh, uh, shorter volatility. And I believe uh, with the market uh, uh, coming off the lows, those the those that have invested in equity funds will have a better chance to outperform in the long term um, if they are passive uh, in terms of their management style. Thank you for the for the tip there. No, uh, now to Sir John Padilla, uh, we have a question regarding the property sector. No, uh, is it one of is it poised for a comeback uh, for for the next few years? I think the entire economy is poised for a comeback. 
in, in the coming years. And the property sector has been one of the most devastated sectors in the market due, uh, with, uh, as a result of the pandemic. Uh, if you're talking about the property sector, you have basically, you should be looking at three major legs, the retail, the office, and the residential. And given an economy that remains to be on expansionary mode, the economy remains on a growth pattern, we believe that all of these drivers will be present in the property sector. However, we think that the growth will be more deliberate, will be more moderate over, over a period of uh, several years. But we believe that the property sector is poised for a rebound, especially when you know, we become more confident about going back to the malls, uh, you know, shopping will return. Uh, you know, when that when that time happens, then probably the driver in the property sector will add uh, to the growth of the of the property space. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now this question, I think uh, this is very interesting, um, Sir Dondi. I think this is for you. Uh, considering the current situation, uh, which is more advantageous, uh, investing to the world market or the Philippine space? Okay. That's interesting, no? Um, you know, I said the participation rate in the Philippines is only um, 1%. More importantly, um, the Philippines only accounts for 1% of the world in terms of market capitalization. So we're a small part of the world. Um, and I think that it showed the 30 index names um, with the logos, no? And Really, um, it's a good representation of the Philippines. Um, but there are sectors or hot markets that we are not exposed to, um, including artificial intelligence, other thematic themes no, that are not available if you invest locally. I think for Filipinos, um, we have to put a large portion of our investments in the local markets because we're more familiar with it. Plus, we're peso-based, so you don't also have that currency volatility to deal with. But I think um, part of the total portfolio strategy, um, especially if we want exposure to types of sectors that are not available locally, um, we want to tap offshore markets. Currently, we have feeder funds, uh, as shown by Derek earlier. Um, we're also coming out with a thematic fund, which covers um, future technology, digital health, security, um, ESG, which is not available in the Philippines. I think a portion of your portfolio should go there as well. Um, take note, like I mentioned also earlier, uh, Philippines is currently trading at a 25% discount of the highs um, versus the U.S. is at all-time highs already. Um, but having said that, I still think a portion should go to the U.S. and a bigger portion should go to the Philippines, only because we are Philippine-based. Hi, Don. Thanks for that. Uh, just to follow up on that, do you have any recommendations for other markets, uh, let's say uh, developed markets in Asia, Japan, Europe, uh, or any uh, for diversification? Yeah, I think um, the... Thing we saw the rally we saw this year has been mostly developed markets. Now I think emerging markets have lagged uh, developed market um, growth, at least in equity markets, as seen in the U.S. Now um, I think, um, especially with the recent U.S. elections, uh, where Biden won, uh, we'll see a shift in the U.S. Um, how the U.S. treats its neighbors and um, other countries to be more globalized versus the previous um, government was more America-centric. So I think that bodes well for emerging markets. So emerging markets have not, um, have not um, picked up as much. So I think there's good opportunity there. And then, of course, the thematic funds I mentioned earlier. Thank you, Don. No? So uh, moving on to the next question. This is for Sir John Padilla. Uh, there are other entities uh, offering UITFs. I think all banks probably offer this. Uh, what do you think is Metrobank's competitive advantage uh, in comparison with our uh, rival banks? I think uh, our track record will show that we've been fairly stable with regard, compared to our benchmark. Uh, I think that is a testament also to the philosophy of the bank. We are careful, yet we are opportunistic. So we do not really invest in 
highly speculative names. We do not want to go out of and, and venture into sectors and areas where we have very little visibility of. So I guess our competitive advantage is, uh, is that we, we take good care of our uh, investors, funds that, that have been entrusted to us. Our performance may, may not be the best compared to uh, another outfit out there, but over a long period of time, we have shown the stability of, of our returns. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, moving on to the next question, this is to Mr. Derek. No, uh, We talked about property earlier. Uh, could you give us a little spiel on the outlooks on the renewable energy and telco spaces? For renewable energy, you know, I think there is uh, much glamour for uh, what we call the ESGs. Uh, we've seen uh, some interest from foreign investors are taking part of uh, in, uh, initiatives like this. And I believe with that uh, 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 taking trend or taking shape in terms of trend, though, we think that local investors will follow suit. As such, renewable energies will uh, gain an upper hand uh, moving forward um, as soon as, of course, uh, these, uh, these trends become uh, more apparent. Uh, as for the telco sector, I think uh, there's uh, post-pandemic, the demand for uh, data will continue. Uh, I think the high uh, this uh, high demand for data will is, is is essential for businesses to continue moving further uh, moving forward. Um, despite uh, new entrants coming to the market, I think the the market or the pie is uh, big enough for all uh, players. Hence, no, I think the 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 goal here is to make sure that we uh, remain invested, no, in any of these uh, telco companies. Uh, thank you, Derek. No, uh, going back to Sir Dondi, I think a lot of people uh, seemed interested in the thematic fund uh, announcement you mentioned. Uh, do we have an available date or uh, time frame when this will be made available to the public? Yeah, I guess it depends also with the regulators as soon as they um, approve it. I think um, hopefully we'll get it in by sometime in the first quarter of 2021. Um, Hopefully February or March, but let's see. We're we're rushing it though, because we think um, that is the one thing that's not available in the Philippines. So I think even other banks won't have that. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, before uh, just to take a segue here, no. Uh, please also to to the audience, uh, kindly key in or type in what webinars you want to hear in the future, what kind of topics you want, so we can uh, try to strategize on our next month's update. No? Uh, so we'll be, we'll be really glad to see what uh, you guys are interested in hearing. Moving on to the next question. No, I think, hold on, uh, let me check. Uh, to Sir Derek, uh, do you think stocks in some companies with large debt uh, are riskier since it will be harder for them to earn money and pay their debts? I think uh, it generally bodes, uh, well, it generally depends on how the investment uh, manages these debts. Uh, in, a, in our current environment where interest rates are low, it is most especially important for investor or for uh, the management or for these companies to uh, take advantage you know, of uh, re, uh, rebalancing these, uh, these debts, especially since we're looking forward to a recovery, I think it's best that uh, they should also take into account uh, expansion uh, to, to be able to cover you know, these, uh, these costs. Again, I think uh, essentially in a nutshell, uh, in, uh, companies with a high, huge debts that are, are pegged at high interest rates are a little bit more at risk. You know? So again, as I mentioned earlier, it would be best for them to take a look at their, uh, their debt profile and make sure that uh, they're up to date with uh, what the market has to offer currently. Again, my basis here is uh, our view for the next few years, which is a recovery, which means that taking on uh, this leverage now will ensure that they make the most out of their uh, expansion moving forward. Uh, thank you, Derek. We have another question here. This is for Sir John Padilla. Uh, I guess there was news on the interest rate cap on credit cards. Uh, what do you think this effect uh, will do or will affect, how will it affect the financial sector? No? Is the interest rate capping something permanent or temporary? Well, first of all, if it's per permanent or 
temporary. I cannot answer that. I think it's about it's uh, all up to the regulators. Uh, but essentially, you're, that will definitely result to a crimping of the of the earnings of the company of financial institutions that have uh, a presence in the credit card market. So, you know, instead of earning 3%, you will only get to earn 2%. So, but I don't think it's a big chunk of uh, the, the, the general earnings of, of the financial institutions, primarily the banks. Got it. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, this next question is for Mr. John Munsayap, no? Sir, will the political developments in the country, uh, especially in the run-up to next year's ele- uh, to, 20, to the next elections, will it damper uh, economic growth? If so, how do we insulate ourselves from the political risks in our personal investment plans? Well, definitely every investment situation, not only in the Philippines, but also uh, outside, there are really other risks that we have to consider. Now, political risk is definitely um, something that we should consider. However, given that the economy is already um, most of the big names have already sort of managed or have made their own strategies in order to make sure that they thrive in um current situation. Now, in terms of the team here at Metrobank, um, in terms of the funds that we're managing, we've already strategized to make sure that um, our funds are not exposed as much um, as we see uh, others in the market. John, uh, I hope we were able to cover most, if not all, of your urgent questions. I do apologize, however, because unfortunately, our time has run out. Uh, Thank you again to our speakers, as well as our panelists, for being with us today and for what you have shared with us. We hope uh, the audience and everyone gained insights from the presentations you shared. And above all, thank you. Thank you so much for the questions you've asked and also for your attendance. Uh, Before we end the session, we would appreciate if you could spend a minute of your time to answer our short survey. You have the option to either use your smartphone's built-in QR scanner, so long as you're connected to the internet, uh, or if you have a QR scanner app, to scan the QR code that's flashed uh, in the screen once the uh, presentation is shown. You may also use your desktops or laptops by clicking on the link at the right-hand portion of the screen. Please, this will only uh, take a minute of your time. also requesting to the team to show the, there there we go, the QR scanner. Thank you so much. Uh, so that concludes our program. On behalf of Metrobank Trust Banking Group, I would like to thank everyone for participating in today's exclusive webinar. Thank you everyone. Stay safe. Until next time.